Hi there, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Trucks and Crosby. I have 13 HD trucks here on the lot right now, and we're gonna go through everything and anything related to HDs from Silverado and Sierra. I have the old version. This is a 23 High Country. We're gonna compare it to the new version of the High Country. We have a new trim level, the Ultimate Denali HD. I've got it here all storm troopered out with its Vader chrome looking all shiny. And then I have my latest and greatest to the Cars and Crosby channel. This is HMS Cars and Crosby Ultimate Edition. It's got a fresh ceramic coat done to it, and we're gonna go through everything that there is to know about these trucks starting right now. <music> Wow, what a nice July day to feature all these trucks. Feeling like a lock guy back when I first started here with my key ring. Probably got about a million and a half, maybe just under two million in trucks here to show you guys today. And I thought it would be appropriate to start talking about what's changed and what are the differences between the original, which is right here. This is a 2023 spec. So the 2020s and the 2023s would be in this styling. And then we have a mid-cycle refresh or a facelift as we also call it, which is right here and that's the 24. So that has been done on the Silverado and the Sierra. And we're gonna go through the differences because I have the exact same spec or very similar in front of me here. Enough that we can make uh, a commonality between them and then also showcase the differences. This is a high country in the Silverado. A little fun note, these things are majorly, or major, mainly based, wow, there is some grammar for you. They're mainly based in our Canadian plant. So I don't know what the logic is. I did inquire to General Motors about this, but um, the Canadians are making the Rados. So these high countries are Canadian girls. And then the GMCs are Flint's finest over here. So my ultimate is right from Flint. It's uh, actually almost about the same distance between both the plants. Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, just north of Toronto, makes the Silverados. And then we have right in the middle, kind of northern bit of Michigan, the uh, Sierras. So honestly, I wish I knew the, the entire logic behind it, but it does kind of make sense if you were thinking about the vehicle in terms of trim pieces to only go to one uh, location. Other than that, underneath these vehicles, unless it's a, a, you know, an off-roading variant or something like that, the suspensions are very similar. So there's not a lot of the mechanics behind it. It's more the trim and aesthetics. And if that's the case, I can maybe understand why we have schwa, as we call it, and Flint's finest uh, right over there. Back to the comparison. We have high countries in front of us. And the first thing that we're gonna talk about, because it's a facelift, is the face. Check this out. That has got an accent piece that we no longer have on this. Can you see it? It's the bronze. We've lost the bronze. This was a styling cue that came out on um, the first gen of this or the, the new gen of this when it started out. Again, this is the half ton version that then went into the full ton. So there's a regular Rado right over there that got stuck in the mix that I couldn't find the keys for my keychain for. And that Rado is here to show us what a half ton would look like in a crew cab short box version. So bronze, we had a nice cool bronze finish on here. We've lost it. I didn't really even notice it until I started looking over these uh, quite a bit before I did this review. Now the Silverado in particular has taken on a more traditional role and the GMC in my opinion at least has taken on more of a sporty, aggressive, high contrast athletic styling role in our lineups. Um, you may not be like us here where we're an all brand store so you may have to go actually to a different dealership in the States or wherever you are to get these vehicles. But luckily for us, I can sell Cadillac, Buick, GMC, and C um, and, and Chevrolet all in the same place. Tongue tied again, that's number two. This is Summit White. So you can now get a high country in Summit White. This is a filthy Summit White. And this over here is the iridescent pearl white that we will talk about as well. So you can get the high country in both of these colors. It's a little different though. Normally when you did a high country in the past, you had to get iridescent pearl white. So that is another difference uh, that I wanted to talk about on the exterior. Uh, in terms of the front of it, you can see right away that the fog lights have changed on here. Uh, that is just one notable difference. The headlights in particular are huge. I'm not even going to try to find the keys, but I know that if I press this here, it will also unlock the vehicle and then we'll get our little light dance that will come on 
Oh, it didn't come on and I'm not gonna try to go through here, but you have a cascading of light that will come through here. Let's just try it actually. Let's just find a random, you know what? Actually, I think I know this key. This is this one. All right, here's the little startup illumination that you're gonna see on the HDs. So a lot more intricate light designs that are on here, even a little cool Easter egg. This Chevy bow tie illuminates up, which is pretty cool. The engine is probably the biggest upgrade that you're gonna see in terms of uh, mechanics on it. Uh, the We're gonna go into a lot more detail on that. Let's just stay focused on what the main differences are on the exterior. Uh, we do have some more places that they put the name of the vehicle. So you're gonna see right, for example, over here that there is now the class. So that's a 3,500 as opposed to um, these being 2,500s. Um, on the side here, we've lost the, the trim piece um, on some of them. It's now like a, a styled piece over here, which you'll see on the Sierra pretty well. Um, other than that, on the exterior, there's not a lot of major differences that you'll notice. Obviously, this has been a little zhuzhed up a bit. This has got fixed boards, whereas this has got the um, retractable running boards. So you're going to see a little bit more of an intricate style on uh, the sides of the vehicle as well. So for the Silverado and um, the High Country trim in particular, you're losing the bronze. Now the interior, in my opinion, is the, the second biggest upgrade. I'm still thinking that the mechanics and the powertrain in particular are the biggest upgrade. Uh, so we have some nominal changes to the outside, but the inside is where I think the second largest upgrade was done to this truck got nice beautiful sun right now uh, coming down on it so that we can showcase the fit and finish I always like to use the door as a profile because it's really helpful in being able to give you guys a very good visual aid on what the differences are I'm really happy to report that we're using a lot more open pour wood inside the vehicle this is something that is a flagship model and I would expect this to become a family heirloom with most people that would get one and so when that's the case and you're gonna be in this vehicle for a long period of time I'm really I'm really happy to hear that they're putting a lot more fine touch materials that are durable and are built to last and i think that open poured wood in my opinion is a lot more practical for the long run over the lacquered finishes that you see on a lot of our vehicles because what happens is is over time they they chip they oxidize and they chip away this is a veneered kind of lacquered finish you can just see that this is um, not real in any way I'm sure that there's some stuff on there if I learned the design process that would probably disappoint me but it feels a lot more genuine and in this area in particular you'll see the bronze accents that we also lost on the new style are, are very lacquered and painted on and in my opinion over time especially if you accidentally had a scratch maybe your wife's diamond ring came in here and took a slice through um, the veneered finish that's on here you'll see see that it won't stand up to the test of time as much because one of the nice things about open poured wood is it's 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 completely randomized in terms of how the design goes so you can kind of blend in as I'm sure some car carpenters can relate to you can blend in stuff a lot more so I feel like this is going to be a lot more durable over time and we have trim models such as the 21 Yukon that have had an open pour wood for a very long time with people that have a lifestyle that's not uh, you know, white collar. There's people that use these trucks to the fullest and they've really shown me over the time that this is an area that I'm appreciating the upgrade to. So this is what we originally had when the uh, new generation of HD trucks came aboot. We have the embroidered high country in there. We've got some nice stitching um, and use of perforated leather for the air conditioned and heated seats. We had a heads up display that was uh, a little more squared off. And then this is without a doubt, the biggest complaint that a lot of people had on the inside, which was that we had a very tiny display. It's not that it was tiny, it's just that this is a land yacht. And so when you have this huge interior with a basic uh, you know, kitchen table style center console that you can sit on, or I guess if you want to sit on it, if you want to lean on it, uh, you can see how everything in this would look a lot smaller in terms of the components. So the center stack on here is something that we change quite aggressively and it's for the good and that was to go to a landscape design. The landscape design interior uh, DIC or dash information display on the center console is probably one of the most important things that you never knew you needed. 
everybody in the truck world, and I'm focusing mainly on Dodge in particular because they were the ones that came to the table first with this big screen thing. They, you know, when they came out with the half ton with the big portrait style screen, everyone kind of raved about it. And I'm not going to lie, we lost a lot of business to it. The Ram uh, had a really great interior and you got to give respect where respect is due. Now, I think that we've done a better job at it and I'm going to explain to you why right now. Uh, I don't have my phone paired up. That's one of the reasons why I can play this because it won't automatically go to my Apple CarPlay when I'm in it. So I'm not going to be able to showcase a text message. But let's just say I had my phone paired up and I got a text message on here. With this being a landscape design, it allows me to have a lot more information on the upper side of the dash. Why is that important? Well, let's just pretend like I'm driving right now and look at what I can see in the corner of my eye. Now, if the text messages and the information like your heated seats and stuff are on a screen down here, look at where my head is going. That's not really cool. I wanna be able to drive, see out of my peripheral vision even when I am looking at a text message or something like that on the screen. And with a landscape design, you can do that. There's another screen up here with a redesigned second generation uh, live stream camera mirror. This is not gypsy magic. This is not witchcraft. You should embrace it because it gives you 300% more visibility out of the back end. And as I know from my first road trip with HMS Cars and Crosby Ultimate Edition, this gets filled up. We went to wine country and I got a lot of grape juice from Ontario. And uh, this whole area was packed with luggage and stuff because I lost the third row. It still worked for carrying all of my family's stuff, but I lost the view out of the back that I would have had from an old school mirror. This allows me to still have that view. I'm looking right now at a bunch of trees, but because this was obstructed, I still had a view. And then obviously you have your beautiful big mirrors, which are very helpful as well. So back to the landscape style here. This is a Google embedded operating system that you can have updating at any time. If you guys are taking these into the bush or somewhere that's off, uh, you know, the beaten path, you can even save, um, certain areas and embed them so that when you're offline you can still have this this uh, map doing it so if i wanted to go moose hunting up north here i can go into here and then i can save this part of the map and uh have it so that it's embedded in the system so when i'm in the boonies i can still uh get that area so we're just in the middle of nowhere bait right in big skeeter county we're going to download that and then it'll be there permanently um, this has on it a um, very aggressive antenna, which allows you to have a Wi-Fi hotspot that's three times as powerful as your cell phone. So you may still be able to get away with that, but I think it's really convenient to be able to download this right from here, embed it into the vehicle, and then you're good to go. So for this being a, a, a very um, purpose-built vehicle, that's a, an invaluable tool that's part of the Google embedded operating system just off the top of my head that I can relate. And it's a lot more of an ergonomic setup, in my opinion, with the landscape design. I love the fit and finish. We're not even getting into the sound system with this beautiful laser cut speaker cover that's on here. And then we also have open poured wood over on the secondary uh, glove compartment. So this is your trailing provisions compartment from before. And uh, I will note that because this is in an open pour piece of wood, uh, it is very hard to put the uh, two inch, two and a half inch hitch sleeve, wherever it is in that upper area now. So this is one downside and not to go back to back with downsides, but I did notice also that when I have it in gear now, there is a portion of the screen that does block where the home button display is. So that's a first world problem. But if you want to watch my channel, I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about these trucks. And so, you know, even though I sell this, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid and I have one myself. There's things through my ownership process of me buying and owning every car that, um, you know, I, I want to put my name on in terms of selling uh, to people. That's one of the things that I've found. So that's, you know, one of my prides. You know, I really enjoy the fact that I can not only just sell these products, but get to know them myself. And I think it's without uh, further notice, let's go over there and uh, look at the Ultima Denali in the AT4. Okay, Vader Chrome. This is a new trim level. We actually have over here a Denali. So we're actually gonna take a walk down HD lane here and uh, show you what used to be the, the sister flagship vehicle to the high country right there. This is an LTZ, which is also looking very sharp in a very traditional manner. 
surprisingly, these are the most advanced wheels that you can get. And uh, they're on this and a Sterling Silver Ultimate Denali that's getting uh, rock guarded because it's going out for month end. So that's, it's not here for the video, but these are the wheels that are gonna be on the Sterling Silver Ultimate Denali. These are an option. And as you can see, they're a machined wheel. So they have a nice open face. And I thought that they would do very well with it being on that finish right there. So I'm surprisingly not me that bought a gray vehicle. I decided to go with black for the Ultimate Denali just to kind of go with it. Another thing, just again, through learning of me owning these vehicles, um, this is not the wheel for the Denali or any option wheel. So when you get the wheels that I just showed you, which are the machine faced 20s, these are what are gonna come on the truck from the factory. These are not something that you can keep and put your winters on. And why is that? Well, there is this sticker right here. And the sticker says for wheel transport only, not intended for use for extended use, disposal dispose of the wheel after authorized number of recycles is complete. So we have transport wheels that come on the half tons that are just hideous. They also come on the uh, Escalades and the Ukes. And they're very apparent that they're not meant to be used for uh, anything other than transporting the vehicle from the factory. I'm gonna take a page out of Henry Ford's book and explain to you guys why we do that. Automation is best done in uh, a very timely manner. And when you're dealing with lots of different styles of wheels to go on these vehicles, and them also being very expensive because they're machine faced, meaning that they have a face that's a lot more uh, vulnerable to um, things getting damaged. They transport these vehicles with a transport set so that they don't get fixed up, messed up. And then we do them here at the dealership. So this style wheel is what comes on it. And again, just for reference, this is what it will turn into, which is the upgraded wheel for, I believe, $2,800 Canadian. Uh, so you don't get two sets like you would on a Corvette or something like that. And um, you cannot keep them. They are not meant for the long term. With this being such an aggressive uh, wheel, it is very important that you don't abuse that because as you guys know, on an HD truck, the axle is, is mounted inside of the actual wheel hub. And so there's a lot of weight and torque that's going through these wheels. And one of the reasons why we have two extra lugs on this over a six lug that's on a half ton. So even though those are kind of cool and if you powder coated them, they probably look pretty decent like that um, for when you're, um, you know, wanting a winter set. If you're if you're wanting to have two sets of tires, you can't do it. I hate to burst your bubble. Now, this is a Denali and the Denali has always been the top of the line model for our entire truck line. It is our professional truck series and. Um, you know, professional grade is their credo. And you're going to see this is probably the most iconic piece that we have on our GMC lineup, which is our honeycomb mesh grill. It's not as honeycomb as it used to be. It is getting less chromey. A lot of people started going to this because this was the blacked out version of the Denali in terms of price point and features and stuff like that that were on it. But that's no longer the case. The AT4 and the Denali, I would say, are very similar in terms of price point, and they are still um, a great alternative if you're looking for a loaded model that has a little bit more of a black sporty look as opposed to the more traditional chrome look. But now the ultimate Denali takes it to an ultimate new level, but also allows you to have that blacked out look. So if you have always liked the Denali, but didn't like chrome, and you were like me that over the years had experimented in powder coating and painting these grills, and then them turning into a starry night as rocks hit it and the chrome came through. All those years of putting um, uh, overlays and vinyl over the chrome pieces here and replacing and painting out the uh, door handles but still having this chrome piece stick out like a sore thumb. All those years of taking all the trim pieces that are on it and then painting them black because everything on this is chromed out. Those years are now over. For the last seven years that I've been selling professionally, that was something that I heard every year. There was always that one guy that says, I want the best truck you can get, but I want it all blacked out. Get rid of all that chrome, burn it. And so like a, we would do it all the time. That was just our thing. And now we don't have to. Now we can do it all under warranty. And the nice thing about that from a financial perspective is let's say that you decide to lease this. Because you leased it, 
everything that's on the window sticker is residualized. Whereas if you purchase an accessory or you do stuff with me aftermarket, that's not something that's gonna be residualized, meaning that I can't um, take only a portion of that item and, and, and finance it or lease it. When you buy something and you put it on the vehicle, you have to you have to residualize that or you have to pay for that entire amount. And leases are normally done over a short period of time, like two to four years. So if you buy a thousand dollar part, it you're gonna have to divide that thousand dollars over the term. Whereas if you had a thousand dollar option that was on here through a lease and it had let's say a fifty percent residual, you're only gonna have to finance through that lease fifty percent of that thousand dollar part. So this is why. It's even better because it's under warranty. It's already been done. Not to say that we couldn't at Finch Chevrolet make an awesome blacked out truck for you. We can still do that. But now you have it from the factory on the window sticker in one amazing, one ultimate trim level called the Ultimate Denali. We've had it on obviously the half ton and the Ukes, and now we're getting it on the HD. So this is my Ultimate Denali. I was going to do that right there. I was very tempted. I was going to black out even more stuff on it uh, because of it being called Vader Chrome. That that really got to me. I, I'm a Star Wars geek, and Vader Chrome is the name of the finish that you have on an Ultimate. And I just thought this would be the most sinister HD Imperial truck that you could make for, uh, you know, for the sake of having it all stormtroopered out. It's a good look. I've done it many years over the over the years, I still, you know, for example, Snow White and the Seven Gears is a Stormtroopered out. I had my first car that I ever bought, which was a Camaro 1SS. It was all Stormtroopered out. I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm warming up to this blacked out look and it scares me. So I guess to redeem myself, I am keeping it as traditional as possible to the spec and embracing these chrome accents to kind of give it some more definition. This thing is all shined up, ready to go to prom because... I just got it ceramic coated from our team here and it's feeling like a baby's bum. It's looking shiny. You can see myself in the reflection with my nice new Denali hat. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud car dad, truck dad moment right now. Uh, it won't look like this for very long. So I will show you guys what it looks like over time with it being a huge, you know, 11,000 pound mass in, in black. I'm sure that these huge panels are going to get over time. And as you can see, here's a rookie move with me in uh, using my hands instead of using the doorknob to open the vehicle and you're already starting to see this beautiful ceramic coat that I put on here ruined. Um, I should rock guard it but I didn't. I ceramic coated it and um, I'm keeping the accents on the vehicle such as these wheels that have got the machine face. So these are the standard wheels for the Denali and I'm keeping them on it because I want some definition if you put black on black accents, they just get lost. And in my opinion, you're not, you're not really building any more value into the vehicle. There are some things that I am going to be doing to this, such as the um, fender flares. I just don't enjoy this being the ultimate Denali and having pitted plastic all over the wheel wells. That to me, in my opinion, is not uh, a professional look. What I will be doing is something that was done on this one already when it was in for its pre-delivery inspection, and that is getting the painted finish version. So this is an accessory that's done here at the dealership. This is how they all come from the factory, and then after the fact, you can get them done. So the saving grace for you is that you don't have to worry if you bought this vehicle used or if you didn't know that this existed and not being able to do it, you can go to any GM dealership and you can get a color to match fender flare kit added onto your vehicle and you even get to keep the old ones for recycling or maybe a big plastic fire out back or maybe a memento on your wall until your wife takes it down one day and you don't notice who knows so that is the ultimate denali on the outside now this is really where i think that this is going to set itself apart from a lot of other trucks out there because beauty is in the eye of the beholder and if you don't like the aesthetics of the truck i can't really argue with you because that's your your opinion but what i can say is that the fit and finish finally on an hd is up to the highest level the ultimate level we gotta keep using that tailored stitching in my opinion is one of my favorite things uh, that just really exudes you know quality and luxury you can you can smell it as soon as you get it it just hits you like like a really fancy library 
in terms of the fit and finish and the leather um, that you smell when you come in here. All of this is nicely leather wrapped. You have the Bose Performance Series sound system in here. Ultimate trim is throughout the vehicle, all over the place, and uh, it's really great. The suede all on the headliner and then even having the A-pillar handles wrapped in leather, really nice touch. I really enjoy that. There's a lot of homage to the tallest mountain in North America, which is Mount Denali. There is the coordinates to it. And if you forgot about them being behind you when you're driving, you can see them on your arm rest. And then if you forgot about them over there, you can look into the embossed piece of wood here and see them there. Now let's say that you can't see, but you still have the ability to drive. You have a topographical map so you can feel your way up the mountain through a different places on the vehicle as well. So yeah, we, we, we really went all out. In terms of the mats though, shame on you, General Motors. You should have improvised and, and added to something that you already had on the old ones. This, in my opinion, was the best mat ever done on a vehicle. And I'm sure that you could find through your parts department the, the way of getting these, but these were by far the best mats ever made for a truck. Why? Because it saved you a bunch of money and it had two jobs for the price of one. This was the old mat. I had this in my AT4X and it's on the uh, old High Country HDs. You got carpet in the center, you rip it out for the winter, and then you've got your linered finish for in the winter. Then when the summer comes back again, you snap her back on and you're back in business. That was amazing because I don't have to buy two sets of mats now, leave them in the garage, forget about them, and then not know why I have these mats in there. They're not even in this one yet. Bring those back, General Motors. That was a really sick design. And if I'm getting an ultimate, I want the ultimate mats as well. And that's one thing that they did not put on the ultimate Denali. So constructive criticism for my truck there. But everything else on the inside, primo, top-notch ultimate in my opinion. All right. So let's just close this door. Um, we got an AT4. This is the all-terrain version, AT, and then 4x4, so AT4. You'll see that it is in a very, very nice, cool color, volcanic red. Uh, it's a deep color. It's got a lot of character. And I think with this being a fun, sporty vehicle, I just wanted to showcase a little different styling cue that still looks amazing as opposed to what most people do, which is take an AT4 and then, you know, put all the white and black on it. I think that's been overdone. And for me, I'm, I'm really digging these reds right now. And then also, if you do um, sterling silver, it is a really cool gray that I wish was here that I have right now in an Ultimate Denali, so all the accents are blacked out on that as well. So the uh, suspension on this, you've got a Rancho tubular suspension on here. This is not the AT4X version, so that will have an even more aggressive suspension. And then there's a ZR2 version that is also uh, coming out. Uh, it'll start production in the fall, and um, we don't know a lot more about it in terms of pricing yet. Um, actually, no, that's not true. We do know pricing. It fits in between the Ultimate and the AT4. So it's, it's about in the teens. So this right now is uh, not got a single additional option on it. This is an Ultimate Denali for 120 as of right now, this video. This is about 109. This Ultimate Denali is all loaded up because of the premium paint, the fender flares. It's about 126. And then there's another one that's the gray one and it had the wheels and everything else done and it was about 129. So those, that's the most expensive vehicle in a truck that you can get from General Motors as of right now. Uh, as a Canadian, if you're a Canuck, you're in luck because I am a Canadian dealer. Here's another fun win for you. Uh, this does not have luxury tax because of the weight of the vehicle. So if you are wanting to buy this and it's a $130,000 asset that you're buying, you don't have to worry about that 20% on that 30 grand, which is above 100. So another reason why I decided to go to an ultimate was because these prices were creeping up uh, and I knew I wasn't gonna have to pay an additional tax from the luxury tax uh, for that reason. But more importantly, I needed a car hauler um, vehicle uh, for when I'm delivering vehicles. All right, so that is, I think, a brief um, and informative run through of the differences on the trim and the aesthetics. Now to the engines, and I should probably pop the hood and get it ready so that you can um, see it a little bit easier. All right, powertrain time. There is a gas version. Uh, it is the same as what we had on um, the, the previous uh, 23 to 20 models. 
Uh, so we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about differences and that has to do with the Duramax. This thing is almost a new engine, I would say. There is a new turbo. There's even um, new uh, liners and seals inside of the um, block. Um, there is a whole new remapped uh, engine. The, the Allison was also redone a bit in order to compensate for uh, a lot of things related to um, the, the torque. The, the torque is the biggest upgrade that you would have on this vehicle. 25% more. You're going to feel it most in the low end. Uh, you have 470 horsepower, which is all right, but you have 975 foot-pound torque out of this puppy. This thing is a unit. It is amazing. And the um, power, you know, I, I haven't had a HD truck before, so um, I can attest to um, it being an amazing ride, but I've already talked to the people that have got the new redesign that had a previous one and they notice it in particular on the low end so when you're driving in the city and stuff like that it's a lot easier to be able to get into traffic so if you have a busy road and you're trying to get into that busy road you have a lot more low end torque that's going to be able to get you to scoot in instead of having to wait for a very long gap uh, just as a city slicker that's the scenario that i noticed it in um, but i'm sure there's a lot more practical um you know constructive uses for it in terms of what you would do with it for your industry or purpose uh, that you can find. In terms of towing, which is something that I'm going to be mainly doing with it, there is a lot of stuff that's been done to the engine braking system to allow it to have a lot more control when you're braking uh, with a load behind you. So that's another thing is this is going to be a lot more uh, of a stable, uh, efficient vehicle when you're slowing down and decelerating with a load behind you. So that was another big thing that was worked on with the powertrain in particular with these HDs. Um, I still can't get over 975. Why couldn't they just find a couple more horses laying around and make this thing a, an easy G note thousand horsepower or foot pound torque. That would have been, that would have been sick. That would have been a statement, but I'll take 975 any day. Um, so in terms of power, this thing is a lot more efficient in how it does it. I, for example, am still on my first tank and I'm, I'm, I went to Niagara and back from London uh, so I have about 700 kilometers from there and I still have about 150 kilometers of range and that's with about 20% of it being, uh, I'd say 30% of it being city and the rest of it being highway. Um, so you can get a thousand kilometers to a tank, uh, no questions asked. I don't really know in the long term yet what the efficiency is going to be different wise, but I'm guessing it's going to be in and around 11 liters per hundred. I apologize uh, for not having the conversion verbally but i'll put it up as a display here for you guys that are still using that weird system imperial um yeah so powertrain wise i would say that this is probably the biggest upgrade because at the end of the day this is why you get this thing obviously the suspension with it having torsion bars is um not going to be the best over a coil spring or even a leaf spring suspension if you guys didn't know that Fun fact for you, this thing doesn't have shocks in the front. That is the shock on an HD truck. That is a torsion bar. And so as the lower control arm moves, this twists and that is what stores the energy that you had from the bumps. One other thing that I'd note over the blue ovals and the other ones out there is that this has got an independent suspension instead of it having a, a straight axle. So if you have a bump on this side, you're not gonna feel it nearly as much on the other side. So that is, in my opinion, one of the biggest benefits to us and our suspension system that we have over uh, the competition. Uh, last thing that we'll do before we close this episode up is I'll just showcase some of the other trim levels and options that we have. Again, if you've gotten this part through the video, it sounds like you're interested in about trucks. And if you're from the Ontario area, with me having 13 trucks on ground, um, I definitely have the ability to get you what you need and give you the experience. We will deliver it to you if you're out of town. So that is not something you have to worry about in your logistics. Uh, we are very fortunate to have a very aggressive allocation for trucks, as you can see, because this is just what's sitting on ground right now. Out of these trucks, there's only two that are unsold. I have no idea why, but this AT4 right over here, which is a diesel AT4 crew cab, uh, is still available at around 107 as of the time of this video. And then this LTZ, because we couldn't get a high country for the first few weeks, is the only other thing that we have available. So there's two out of 13 uh, 
are, are unsold. And then we also do a lot of fleet stuff here. So this is an example and a really good view of what it looks like without having a box on the vehicle. One of the coolest things is that this is the fuel line. Isn't that interesting? There's your fuel tank, obviously. And then you've got your spare, which is in an interesting place because there's no uh, need to worry about it. And then you've got um, for hydraulics and upfitters, uh, the ability to put on obviously what's probably going to happen with this, which is a, um, a dump bed or a flatbed. A uh, really cool thing that I can probably see on the other side is if you do have one of the lower trims, it does have a parasitic uh, access on the transmission to be able to power all the hydraulics. So there is a different Allison transmission on the, oh, this is going to be tough to see, um, on the, uh, wow, look at that, <laughs> uh, on the work truck versions. I'm just going to try to get some of that off. Oh, that sucks. Oh, yeah, dirty. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, please keep me um, in the loop about anything that you guys notice about these HG trucks. This is a big shift, in my opinion, even though it's a mid-cycle refresh on paper. I think with the powertrain and the interior, a lot of you guys can agree with me that we finally got into the category where we um, should have been on the first start startup of this, but we finally got there. And the 24 model year, I'm excited to be able to showcase it on my channel when I'm doing adventures. And if you're interested in buying one of these trucks, please let me know. Uh, we can order them bespoke through our dealership here. You don't have to find your dealership that's local anymore. I think that's the biggest thing that's changed since the pandemic is you can have somebody that does a lot of volume. I have a team here that works specifically with me so we can expedite and have this done as, as professionally and as efficiently as possible for you. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this and you wanna see more content on GM related stuff, hit that subscribe button. Have a great day and happy motoring.